So there has been a lot of hoo-ha as of late in adding the suspension on gravel bike. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Ritchie Outback, which has built-in suppleness and compliance, but it achieves this all through frame material. Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back, Pathless Peddlers, and if you are fans of the supple life, gravel riding, bike touring, bike fishing, then you have found your people, consider subscribing. So before I jump into this video, I do want to make a note that this is an independent review. I'm not getting paid by Richie. Whether you buy this bike or not has no financial bearing on me, and this is all possible because of you guys who are supporting the channel. I don't have to get sponsorship from the bike brands that I'm then reviewing. You see how that's kind of like a weird conflict of interest? So anyway, Anyways, the Ritchie Outback is a gravel grinder slash bike packing bike from Ritchie. I've used many components from Ritchie in the past, but this is the first time I've ridden a bike from them. And I have to say, this is a surprising bike. You guys know I'm a fan of 650B, and although I'm not going to give it completely away in, in the very beginning, it does have a surprising amount of suppleness. So the bike is only offered as a frame set and retails for just under about $1,400. The frame material is steel with a carbon fork. What's unique about the frame is that it uses proprietary tubing spec by Tom Ritchie himself and the budding is really sophisticated. So it has stiffness where you want stiffness and suppleness where you want suppleness. It's not just straight gauge tube that's been welded together. This particular bike is running SRAM hydraulic disc brakes. Yes, the tower of power up front. Richie handlebars, Richie saddle, and a Richie 27.2 seat post. The bike has through axles, front and rear, and external cable routing for ease of maintenance. The wheels are Richie Zetas, and the tires are 40 millimeter Richie Speedmax tires, which roll pretty good on pavement, but really come to their own in mixed terrain. The drivetrain in this particular build has a Praxis this one by chain ring in the front and SRAM force rear derailleur. So that's enough about the components. Let's talk about the bike since it is offered only as a frame set you're probably gonna run whatever components you want, so I don't wanna to linger too long on that. I'm gonna address this point right off the bat because I know some of you this is gonna be a make it or break it kind of proposition, but there are no rack or fender mounts. The design intent was for this bike to be, to be really light and sporty, and if you want a bike with all the bike barnacles, they've got another bike for that. I believe it's called the Ascent. So this, it's meant primarily to be used with rackless seat bags and bike pa packing bags. So if that's a deal breaker for you, then I guess we'll see you in the next video. So I've been riding the Ritchie Outback the last couple weeks. I've used it on some Dirty Kanza training rides and up and down the my favorite local climbs here in Missoula. And I have to say this bike is a surprisingly fun bike to ride. I think one of the big reasons is the weight. For a steel bike with pedals and saddle and all that stuff, on bathroom scale it weighed in about 19 to 18 pounds. So this is a big shift from say the Gorilla Monsoon, which is almost tipping the scales at 30 pounds naked. So in terms of the front end handling, I would classify it as stable, but not boring. It's definitely not twitchy like a road bike and it inspires confidence on descents. You can just completely rail paved descents and it holds its line really well, even on the rough stuff. In terms of the rear end handling, it's pretty lively, but not super quick like you would get in a road bike. Overall, I feel like the front matches the back. It's just a good all around riding bike. For me, it really matched well with my climbing cadence, in particular when I'm standing and climbing. And I would say for me, it does plane. There's just a real springiness in the frame. It feels like almost riding uh, a leaf spring. You put in energy and it kind of absorbs it and then pushes it back. And this springiness also leads to a super comfortable ride. In particular, the front end is actually really supple. You'll notice that it's got a smaller diameter head tube and a straight steerer tube. They really moved away from the big tapered head tube design that we see in a lot of bikes, which then companies have to re-engineer that suppleness, that compliance with other strange mechanisms. But the Ritchie Outback achieves it just with frame materials and tubing choice, diameter, all that good stuff. I've been thinking of the way to best kind of communicate how uh, the front end feels. And I feel, and you guys know I'm a fan of the Redshift Shock Stop 
stem. And I feel like the front end on this bike gets about 60 to 70% there, but it's all built into the frame, which is pretty amazing. So, so far, really stoked on this bike. It was a bike that came in and, you know, I was like, well, it's not 650B, how awesome could it be? But hopping on it, riding it for the last couple of weeks, uh, it's, it's a cool ride. So let's talk about the things I didn't like about the bike. I wish there was a 650B specific option. I mean, you guys know that was coming. But the other thing is that it's got clearance for up to 40 millimeter tires. And in the fork, when I was running the Oveja Negra uh, stem bag, when I wrapped the bottom strap to the fork, the clearances were really tight and the strap was rubbing on the tire. So I actually had to move that, uh, that crown fork strap and move it to the head tube. And this leads me to my next point. For most people, uh, you know, 40 millimeters is going to be plenty. But if you ride in chunkier terrain or do uh, historically muddy events like Land Run, uh, the clearances are gonna be pretty tight with the 40 millimeter. For me personally, I'd love to see more clearance. Um, you know, either a 650B option or enough room to accommodate something like the Soma Cazaderos with some mud clearance or the new tires from Compass. But that said, this is a lot of bike for most people. It would make an awesome general endurance road bike, uh, mixed terrain, gravel event bike, lots of uses. So if you're looking for a high quality fun riding steel road bike that's outside of the QBP family but isn't full on custom build, then I think the Ritchie Outback is actually a great middle ground. You get a fun, compliant, supple, sporty steel bike that definitely is a lot more performance oriented than say uh, some offerings from Surly or even All City. I think downsides is, you know, obviously the cost uh, frame set alone is going to cost more than some complete builds and also availability. You know, it's hard to, to really see if this is a bike you like because most shops probably aren't going to carry a complete build. And really that's why I do these videos so I can help kind of communicate uh, how these bikes feel like that, that you may not be able to get in your area. So to summarize, the Ritchie Outback, surprisingly fun. More fun than I thought it would be. And it does have a liveliness to it, a springiness to it that uh, I've actually not felt in some of the recent bikes I've reviewed. So if you have any other questions about the Ritchie Outback, leave those in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this independent review or other reviews I've done, consider supporting the channel. It's what keeps these reviews happening and independent. And until next time, keep the supple side down.